When you're creating a lofted cut, you need exactly the same thing you need for a regular loft. However, instead of adding material, we're going to be cutting material away. Now, I've already got a shape here on the screen, which we already lofted, and I want to create another lofted feature inside of this to cut away some material. But this time, instead of just using a basic loft, which is two profiles, I'm going to use a couple different profiles as well as a guide curve so I can define the path that's going to follow as it transitions from one shape into the other. And if you're planning on using a guide curve, a lot of times it makes a lot of sense to create that curve ahead of time. So right here I've got the YZ plane. I'm going to click on that one. I'm going to create a new sketch. And let's go ahead and just create a couple basic lines. Uh, but I want to snap to the top and I want to snap to the bottom surfaces. Bef so before I create the lines, I need to create some reference geometry. And I can do that by projecting a sketch. So I'm going to project something here. I want to create some reference figures. And I'm going to choose that top surface as well as the bottom surface. So those are my two different edges. And I want to maintain the associativity so those lines don't move around. Click on OK. And now you can see I've got a reference line on the top and bottom. Now what I can do is I can snap to those lines. So snap here with my line. I'm going to drag that line out, making sure it is uh, horizontal. Come over here at an angle, and then come down here and make sure that uh, we snap here as well. All right. So a couple of relationships or, or constraints have been added between the two here. So I've got a parallel uh, relationship, and this one's horizontal. So that means that one's horizontal, and I think we're OK. Now I want a nice, smooth transition. So sometimes if you don't create a nice, big radius, the feature will fail because it has to be able to drag that shape and transition it smoothly. So you got to make sure you've got a nice fillet that's going to save the day here. So I'm going to type in like a one inch fillet. And then I'm going to fill it from this line to this line right here. Right? Apply that. And then this line here over to this line right here and apply that. All right? So I've got a one inch fillet between the two. Everything's looking pretty good. Uh, close out of that, deactivate the sketch, and now what I want to do is I want to create a shape, a profile at the top and one at the bottom, so that I can define that loft. The only problem is, is we forgot to go and add in a reference point, because I want to be able to reference the end of that point, and I don't have access to that sketch from outside of the sketch, so i got to go back and modify that. So over here is sketch number three, right click on it, click on edit, and come up here under References, and right here you can see Insert Point from Sketch. Click on that one. All right, I want to choose that top surface. Click right there and apply, and it should show up right over here. All right, and then do the same thing at the bottom. So click on that point right there, apply, shows up over there, and hit Close. Okay, and then deactivate the sketch, and now we have everything that we need to create the next couple of sketches. So the next sketch I want to make is on the top surface. So click on the top surface, right click, and say Activate 2D Sketch. <coughs> There's our point, right? We want to link to that point, and I want to create a rectangle at the top. So I'm going to create a rectangle. Uh, it'd be great if you could snap right here, but unfortunately you can't snap there right now. But if you just draw a rectangle right next to that, if you actually then add a dimension, because you can add a dimension between the two, right? And if you want to have it offset, that's great. I mean, you can, you can do that as well. So type in something like an offset, and then just delete it, right? If you, if you delete it, what it does is it activates that point, so then I can grab that center point node, and I can snap it to the other point, and then it's kind of locked together there. So, that, so there's my first shape, and let's go ahead and deactivate that sketch, and let's take a look at what we have. So we have this path, we've got this uh, shape at the top, and then let's go down to the bottom of the shape, right? So here's my bottom, right click on it, activate, and let's just create a basic circle. So same, same issue here is if let's just create a circle right next to where we want to be. We can quickly add a little dimension here, uh, if it doesn't allow you to snap it together. Um, and then just go ahead and click on OK. And then if you delete it, then it will activate it so that uh, you have the ability to just kind of drag and snap those together. All right. And then, of course, we can define the size of this as, as needed. I'm just going to leave it uh, undefined at this point. Deactivate the sketch. And now let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so I think I have everything that I need, right? I have the, the path that I'm going to be going through. I have the shape on the top. I have the shape on the bottom. Let's go ahead and create the loft. And a lot of times, if you're creating a loft, it will fail if you don't have everything set up perfectly. So you got to make sure that you're checking yourself and double checking yourself and making sure everything is aligned and looking good and all the radiuses make sense for that shape to, to profile through. So go over here under loft cut. And my shape at the top is going to be 
sketch number four. So click on that. Uh, my shape on the bottom is going to be sketch number five. Click on that. So notice, as soon as I've selected those two, now I've got this kind of straight line loft. It's transitioning from a rectangle on the top to a circle on the bottom. It looks pretty good. But I want to control how that, I don't want that just to be a straight line connecting the two together. I want to follow a path. And that's what those guides are. So click on guides. We have a couple of different ways we can use guides. We can use global guides, local center line, and such. And these are different ways you can guide that. So if you're going to use, uh, you know, like global or local, you might be connecting the corners of the rectangle to the shape on the bottom and defining how that's going to be. And you can use multiple guides to do that. But one of the most basic ways is just using the center line loft. And I can choose it right over here from sketch number three. There it is. And now take a look at what happens. So now it's actually taking that, that center line and it's using that to kind of drive that shape as it goes from one thing to the other. Okay. Click on OK. And that is our lofted cut. So pretty, I mean, there's, there's some steps involved, right, to do these kind of lofted features. Uh, you have to have multiple drawings, multiple sketches on different planes, and you have to really spatially think about how everything's lining up together. And if you, you do need to also relate uh, reference points from one sketch to the other, if you want to like, you know, put the center point or or add a dimension, things like that. So lofting and sweep features, things like that, they do take a little bit more forethought on how you want to create it, and you might have it fail a couple times first. But again, just remember, you've got to have a profile on the top, profile on the bottom. It's a, it's a great thing to be able to use, and it's a very powerful feature inside the software.